All right, so welcome back. If you're returning, thank you once again for dropping on by. I hope I hope I impress you this time. Maybe if I didn't impress you last time, you know, I hope this time works out. Uh, if you're new, thank you for dropping by. My name is Micah. I'm trying to create a lot of very like <clears throat> not so video game asset blender kind of stuff, but more like motion graphics, trippy stuff. Things that I haven't really seen or things that I've learned from others that I haven't seen really shared on YouTube as of yet. And we'll be sure to credit them as we go. But for today, we're going to be messing around with a very simple effect that I played around with within. I'll just go ahead and post this like type layout that I made with a friend. Um, and we're going to we're going to work on that. We're going to get that one done today and I'll love to see what you create. So let's dive on it. Per usual, we're gonna go ahead and delete everything. We're gonna go over to our little camera icon here for the render properties, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, turn on refraction as well. Now, let's go into color management. Let's go ahead and just do this right ahead. Let's do medium high contrast just because. And within edit, go to preferences. One thing you're gonna wanna do here, click animation. Let me get that away from my face click animation and then you're gonna go ahead and do the default interpolation into linear not bezier because you're gonna get a really weird loop and I know you don't want that okay bada bing bada boom we're in it's time to get started so what we're gonna do first is modeling like I like to do I think that's become my practice at this point so let's spawn in a cylinder Let's take the amount of what I like to do is like switch to wireframe. So hold down Z and just to see it a little better, I switched mine to about like I think it was about like six. Let's do eight this time. I think it'll be kind of a cool kind of shape. Okay. So once we have that, we're gonna press R X, rotate it 90 degrees. And let's, let's drop in a camera. So go ahead and hold down tilde. Go to your front. Press the camera. Drag it back a little bit. Don't worry about it being fully working yet. Split the workspaces. Now what you're going to do is hold down tilde and view inside the camera. And here's what we're going to want to do now. We can... Uh, let's leave it. Let's make sure this is in Let's keep it really small for right now. If we need to tinker with that, we can tinker with that. Um, what you want to do is you want to almost like have the camera take up the entire cylinder from the outside. Uh, one trick I have learned if you select your camera in your layer list kind of thing, go down to viewport display and the pace of out. If you turn it up, now all you see is what's inside. So it helps out a little bit. All right, cool. So at this point, we're kind of done with the modeling. Everything else will be lights and animation. So speaking of animation, let's start animating. So hold down, press N, select your cylinder. I'm going to call this animated object. It's up to you. I'm just going to rotate it on 360 by 360 degrees. So on this first keyframe, which is zero, and on the last keyframe, you're going to go ahead and put 360. Now you can see you have a rotating cylinder going on. It's kind of cool. Okay. Once we have that, now we're going to play around with some shading and we're going to get the cool stuff going on. So let's do material preview. Switch on your workstations to the shader editor. Select your cylinder, click new. Go ahead and come on over here. Click this like red kind of circular icon, some material properties. Go down, turn on back face culling. What you want to do is press tab, go into edit mode, press control N. I believe actually that's not control, that would be alt. Alt N and flip your normals. 
Once you flip them, you can kind of see now. We can pretty much see inside of it, right? It's exactly what we want. So we turn preview. And we'll get some cool reflections going on. Now let's play with the materials and then let's add some lights in. So what you want to do is you want to kind of turn down your roughness by a bit. Turn up your metallic by quite a few. I personally sometimes leave it all the way up. Then let's play around with some of the texture kind of things. So bring in a bump node. Connect that bump node to your normal. Shout out to Neb Motion for showing me this technique. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I tag him at this point. Then connect your bump node to let's do a musgrave texture. Connect that. We can do here. Connect this. Do color ramp. Connect that to the roughness. Here. Press Control T on your Musgrave texture. Okay, I'll just go ahead and open this up. All right, what you're gonna do? Connect object to the vector. What I also do is bring in the value node. Connect that to the scale. Make it one. What I did with this was I went ahead and just brought it down to something really low. So that's about like zero point eight. Like it's really up to you at this point in terms of how you want that to look. And this color ramp kind of just controls the roughness all together. So you'll get spots that actually won't even really have much reflection. And it could be kind of neat. It's really up to you. Okay. So we also can rotate what's going on inside of our atmosphere. So let's just make sure if I remember when if I do all these, I don't, let's see. So zero. Okay, it's the same. So we can rotate it by 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and within our mapping, let's go ahead and keyframe these rotations. So on the first, first one, we're gonna insert, I guess it's already zero. On the last frame, we're gonna insert 360. Insert that. And you can now see we have things just kind of like, like shit's moving, right? <laughs> Let's play around with the background color of our environment. The reason why it's so light. Right now we're in material preview though. When we get to render, it's going to get dark. Okay, now that we have this little animation going, we're going to want to bring in some lights. So let's bring in some lights. Go to area light. The luck I got was I put one on the bottom. Uh, we're gonna have to switch into render view now, my friend. <clears throat> put one on the bottom of the power. This really, the power, okay, the power definitely depends on how big your shape is. That's a hot thought right now. Like you need to, you need to pay attention to however big your shape is will definitely affect the amount of power that you need to make uh, a really cool effect. So you're going to duplicate it, press R on the X axis. You can just like kind of rotate it by 180 degrees. And we can play with colors here. I had this like blue. Do this like crazy kind of green ish kind of thing. And you can see now. We have this effect. 
or things are like really trippy but we're not there yet we need one final step so I think this is pretty simple of a lighting setup we're not going to get too much more advanced if you want you could drop it some more and keyframe the colors which will make it even crazier I don't really want to do that as of this moment right now in this tutorial but we can we can dive into that later so make sure you save your document I'm gonna go ahead and call mine tutorial tutorial work trippy keyframe that go to compositing here's where things get fun now what you're gonna do is shift a bring in a viewer shift a reroute and then connect the viewer I mean the reroute to the viewer just bring these over here we don't really need Let's keep things organized I guess huh lens distortion this is your money maker right here my friend and let's render out a still image so that's f12 let's get an image that has a little more let's get a part that has a little more flavor you know something where I can really see so on the 60th frame oh too much dispersion I think huh it's really interesting coming through a bit dark which is actually like surprising me let's just add in some of these <coughs> some of these things so add in a mix switch it to value see things are getting a little more interesting F12 you can kind of see we got some stuff going on and I added another mix. And I made mine the difference. And from here, you can actually get more into what color you want to have. <clears throat> and that's pretty much the tutorial, my friend. So, you press F12, you can kind of see. We have some stuff going on. If you want to like reduce the amount of craziness, what you can always do is just like tone down the difference a little bit, or you can tone down the lens the lens dispersion. The higher the dispersion is, the crazier it will be. Um, and if you want, you can get flavorful with the distortion. It kind of gives this cool kind of effect, but we're gonna leave that alone for now. <laughs> How do you render this? To render this, essentially what you're gonna do, select the right output, go to FFmpeg video, go over to perpetually lossless. <coughs> perpetually lossless, container, MPEG-4. And you're gonna go over to render animation, and when you click render animation, your things will be uh, up and running. So, extra credit time for everyone that's interested. Sorry, there's a bit of a train going by, but we're gonna do this in the extra credit portion. <laughs> I'll try to clean this up. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a keyframe into my color. Around here, I'm gonna go ahead and insert another keyframe, make it blue. Take that keyframe, you know, it's the end. If you look, now we have, as it animates, it's also gonna change colors. So, recapping, my friend, what we have here is we have this, <coughs> we did this back face culling, which made <coughs> you see the inside of this shape. We added two lights, 
essentially it rotates so now you get the lights that are like moving and uh, the textures moving everything's doing really cool stuff then we went ahead and went over to the compositor and added some like cool lens distortion some value stuff and some difference and that's pretty much it so check back in once the render is done all right so here we are we finished give yourself a nice solid pat on the back you did a great job today <clears throat> showed up for yourself showed up for that creative inner child just doing the do doing the thing but anyways yeah i just wanted to thank you once again for dropping on by and uh watching the whole tutorial you know getting to the end even if you didn't do it yet if you do something a little bit maybe take one thing out of the tutorial you know I know a lot of the uh, influencers within this realm always say, feel free to tag me on your finished expression. But I want to reiterate that and I want to say, feel free to tag me. You don't you don't have to even fully like credit me or something. I know sometimes we'll take tutorials and just like, there's a level of pride to like not telling us from a tutorial, but you could tag me on the, on the low. You could DM me. You don't have to like uh, show all your friends exactly me but i just want to see what you do and i want to support your cause so thanks again and i'll catch you around in the next video